a 40 to 45 kilo pig. And that's the size of pig that we would, you know, generally use if we, if we can do. Uh, a 50-50 kilo, 55 kilo pig would actually look very similar. It's just big on the bum, big on the shoulders, but very similar size. So, because like I was saying, you're paying more money, really, for the size of pig, which just makes your life easier. So if you don't need the meat, it's, it's better to pay, I think it's better to pay the extra money to make your life easier. And if you get the bigger pig and you don't need it, you see just whipping your back leg off it. But we, we, we've done all the hard work, so for you, you just put a pig in there, turn it on, and it cooks the pig, and you shouldn't have to worry about it. Really. Um, and that's, that's the idea. These um, were actually designed for the higher market originally, so they were a machine that we did for the higher market. And, um, the idea being that somebody who's never cooked a pig before can cook a perfect pig in, in this machine. Like that, shut the lid, and then when it's cooked, you go back and fold it. Cut the tray. Spit the tray, put them on the lid. And it sits on there. And then you serve. And again, it's that simple. Yeah. But it's the simplicity that makes it work. You've got heat, you've got fat, you've got salt. You don't really want moving parts. Once you start introducing moving parts and things in there, then things go wrong. In our world, you can't afford anything to go wrong. If you've got that pig book, say you're doing those 200 people, and they want to eat that pig along with all those other different types of foods at 7 o'clock at night, yeah. at 7 o'clock at night, that, that pig has got to be ready. Yeah. It's no good to be ready at 10 o'clock, it's too late. It's no good to be ready at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it's going to be ready at 7 o'clock. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter what happens that day, come 7 o'clock, that pig is going to be ready to eat. So the equipment has to be, it has to be 100% reliable, you really can't. Too many. And if you cut all that belly off, it opens it up and lets the heat get right into the pig as well. Good dog food as well. Good dog food as well. You know, you see, funny you say about mincing, it makes really good sausages. Yeah, yeah. So you could actually make all your own sausages. Well, I do. With all this. With anything. Well, and, I, and I use pork back fat. <laughs> so, to put, yeah. so that's perfect for me. Yeah, mix it in. Yeah. I've taken a good bit off because it's no use to you. Just get it opened up, get it right opened up. And the funny thing is with it, when you first start doing it, that's going into Port of LA, it's going into your Chinese, you know, port, you know, something. But I'll guarantee you within six months it's going into it. <laughs> Well, I'm just working around the joint. There's actually lots of videos of me doing this on, online. So, if you just go to either Hogmaster UK on, on YouTube or Spitting Bill on YouTube, there's quite a lot of videos there of me uh, pepping pigs for hogs, for spits, and all, all different things. <laughs> I'm just going. You're sticking out the shoulder, right? Yeah. The, the, the hardest places to get hot, the hardest places to keep them and get cold. Right in there, right in the core. That's what's in the top right. So he's at 60 degrees, which so he's perfect. I've got him in the top right. I'll score him in the tray. You know, we were saying again, if you get a big pig, you've got to move that pig around as well, haven't you? It's a great big yeah. 60, 70 kilo pig. Just physically move it around yeah. quite a bit in the pig. He's a lovely satisfaction. He's great because he's got all the presents there, hasn't he? Yeah. He's a nice looking pig. Separate two halves of our pig. If you look, we're going through the pig and through the fat, but not quite to the meat. It's just, you know, the meat's actually just, just down there. So I want to protect my meat from the heat. I want to open up enough so that all the juices can start flowing out and the heat can get in, but not so far that my meat like that will then actually start to dry out. Same on the sides. And then in between them, shorter ones. Again, what this will do is let all the juices come out, but it'll still protect the meat. So the macaque will still stay into one piece. But all these will open up, all the juices will flow out of there, and they'll all get it. And when we come to serving, all we've got to do is connect the bits, the whole strip will come off, and you just chop them down and get all nice bite sized pieces of fat. So, thank you, Walter. All the water's actually doing is making it wet so the salt will stick, you're not actually getting anything other than that. 
let's say, can you use cider, can you inject it? You can do what you want with it, it won't do any harm. So gas bottles, gas bottles come in all different shapes and sizes. We use a lot of these, we use a lot of these small 13s. You can buy your gas to us, uh, we get a really good deal off Cali Gas, so we'll get you quite a good price on, on gas. A 13 kilo costs you slightly more for the actual gas inside than it does if you buy a 19 kilo. 19 kilo is this big, I think a 19 kilo is 22, 23 pounds. There's a 13 maybe up to 17. But again, it's the size, big size so of gas. Can, can, can you put one in? So that will easily do um, a pig, should do you two, depending on how big the pig is, how long you're serving for, that sort of thing. You should easily get two pigs out of one of those. So it's not a massive cost, it's about £10 per pig we work on for the gas. The thing with that is it's just easy to move around. It's not too big, it's not too heavy, it's quite easy to pick up and move. Whereas the 19 kilos being just that bit bigger and heavier, a bit more awkward to, to move around. On a 19 kilo you'll get four pigs because again it's you know the bottom's that much bigger but it's a lot more gas. Uh, so sort of counterintuitive. Before we worry about this story you tell that's on blowing themselves up. So if you look now here, when we look at the gubbins area here, you've got the pilot light, which is this bit here. It's that little hat, which you'll see a light We've got this thing here which is called the thermocouple. What the pilot light does is the pilot light heats up the thermocouple, sends a message down this wire here to the gas staff and tells it safe to release the gas because there's heat there. There's heat there because the flame's there. If for any reason your pilot light gets blocked and it's not working, you can actually use a blowtorch with a pen lighter to heat up the thermocouple, which will then allow the gas to come out. Once a burner's lit, it will keep the gas hot and keep it lit anyway, and nine times out of ten, whatever's in there is burnt out. It starts working. If it's not, that's why you the, a relatively cheap part. The first thing we've got to do is purge all the air out. It takes a good minute to push all that air out. I hear it all the time, I hear this. It won't light, it won't light, but it won't light because you're not being patient. If you just hold it down for a minute, it will light like that. Hold it down for about 30 seconds, and now that's hot. So now that's heating up the thermocouple, which tells it's safe to release the gas. Once we get it to sloppy porridge, sort of consistency. We'll do it back there, or just anyway. Yeah, you're gonna put you're gonna probably put, put 20 backs of that in. You're gonna put a lot in, and then once it gets up that sloppy porridge, we'll leave it to set. Well, that's gonna make amazing stuff in that, isn't it? off light it and as we put the boiling water in put two fuels under each one they'll keep or you'll see if you put cold water in 10-15 minutes later it's boiling and bubbling away if you put boiling water in now it's immediately boiling you can immediately start cooking things in there
one side completely and leave the cracker on the other side for display purposes. So we're going to take all the cracker off there and we're going to cook it into nice, you know, nice chunks like this and we'll stack it on those there. You'll see, you can even use you know, your tongs and your scissors again. Mm -hmm. Once you get into there, it'll all just come off like that. Yeah. It's a bit hot on one side, and we'll see whether we. And then your bones, I'll just pull out and I'll get you a bin now. With all this round here, you'll just literally peel straight off the bone. Did you give that a bit of a dunk in the juice before you? Yeah, so you... what we're going to do, we're going to break it down a bit now, yeah. so it's nice, nice for them to eat, and then we've got that juice there. <laughs> 